my name is Christine DeMauro. I am a pastelist. Uh, I do other things as well, surprisingly. Uh, I started out not with pastels, but I actually started out with a simple pencil. I always, since I was very young, loved to draw. And that's really my first attraction to the visual arts, was picking up a pencil, picking up a crayon when I was younger, and just making marks on paper. And as I got older, I started to get intimidated with color. I didn't know what to do with it, so I tended to gravitate towards the graphite pencil. And I got very detailed. I used to do detailed drawings, uh, loved doing faces. When I was younger, um, in high school, that's really all I did was portraits, portraits, portraits. I don't know why, but I was always drawn to them. Never thought I would even be interested in doing a landscape. Still likes, maybe. And then I stopped. I, I, I went through high school, I was an art major in high school, and uh, when I graduated, I got out and got a job. Didn't really get anything in the way of um, art. It was just an office job, which I hated. But I did it for the money. <laughs> Everybody did. And uh, I just never picked up a paintbrush or a pencil again for a long, long, long time. I think I, the last time I had done it was I was around 21. And my neighbor, a very good friend of mine, one day said to me, Hey, Chris, you want to go take some cooking classes? Okay. So we did some cooking classes. Then she said, How about some interior design? Okay. We did some interior design at the high school. Then the next question was floral design. You want to try that? So I was getting really um, a jack of all trades, you know, master of none. <laughs> I was trying all these different things. She wasn't an artist, and it didn't occur to me to even do art. The last thing she asked me to do that I said yes to was calligraphy. And I said, hmm, calligraphy, I could do that, sure. I found myself sitting in the class at Kennequat High School with this lady, and I was taking calligraphy with her and my friend, and I would do the calligraphy, and then I would start drawing these little doodles next to the calligraphy, and the teacher walked up to me, she's watching all the people, you know, helping them out. She looks at what I did and she's like, what are you doing? I says, oh, I'm just playing the nonsense. She goes, no, that's not nonsense. That's really good. She says, why are you sitting here? You know, why aren't you taking art? I said, oh, I don't know. I haven't done it so long. I'm afraid I lost whatever it was I had. And she says, oh, you never lose it. You never lose it. You, it's there and just waiting to be used and to come out. And I says, oh, I'm scared, you know, I'm scared that I'm just not going to be as good as I thought I could be. And I've blown it, pretty much. I, you know, wasted all these years. And, you know, I was afraid. I really was. She pushed and pushed. By the end of the course, she had me signed up for a watercolor class. I couldn't have quite high. And lo and lo behold, our beloved Tom Pepper was my watercolor teacher. Yeah. And he was, I mean, I have such fond memories of him. He was, he was fantastic. He would watch me paint, and he would laugh. He would be like, you're, you're using this paint like oil. <laughs> you know? I, mean, I couldn't get like washy with it, you know. He was so loose and goose, and he was just so good with the watercolor. Me, I would sit there, and he's like, this is not the medium for you. You can't do this. This isn't good for you. Because I have a friend for you. I, I need you to call. His name is Walter. So uh, that's how I found Walter. And Can I ask you, when you were doing the watercolor, were you painting the watercolor like oil, or were you... I was using it, um... Thick tight, or... Tight. Not so much thick, but tight. I, I tell like you, me. Yeah, <laughs> but... That's what I was he saw, he saw the leaning towards something else. Again, that love of the pencil, I think, yeah. was coming through. And pastels mm -hmm. are so tactile. You know, you pick up a stick, and I mean, it is painting. Mm -hmm. You're using the side of the pastel. I'm not using the point mm -hmm. often. It, except when I use pencils, the pastel pencils, but when I'm using the sticks, I use the side. But um, it's just a different feel. It's not wet, maybe. It's dry. I don't know. He just thought that pastels was, was going to be the way for me. And I'd never used them before, and I really was still intimidated with color. So I walk into Walter's with my little box of Grumbachers that he was picked <laughs> from high school. He looks at me and says, they're nice. We need more. <laughs> <laughs> so off to the store I went, <coughs> the supplies I needed to buy, and I spent the next three years solely painting pastels with Walter. And the man has taught me everything I know about color. I mean, he just, he's amazing, absolutely amazing. 
he taught me to see color differently. You know, the reflected light. I mean, I never realized, you know, I guess, you know, just looking at something and not having the right instruction, you sometimes see it on your own, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it just takes longer. I think I got such a jump start with him because, I mean, I jumped into it like within six months I was painting with Walter. That's like a gift. I mean, really amazing. I went from not doing it at all to like constant, constant you know, amazing. Yeah, but you had talent though, that's the thing. Yes. That you but, didn't realize, that's yeah. the thing. He woke you, know? you up. But he woke me up. Yeah, he showed he, yeah, me, yeah. I mean, really, I didn't know how to use a pastel. I, wouldn't, I didn't know what to do with these stinking things. The first, one, the first one I did, I did at home, and I brought it over and I showed it to him. I was so proud of myself, and he looked at it, he did it on the wrong side of the paper. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Yeah, but it was it was a fun experience, and I learned what not to do, <laughs> which is fine, you know. But we did an awful lot of still life together, and um, countless still lives. I mean, I can tell you how many apples I painted. I painted every color apple, every size apple, <laughs> and everybody laughs and says, "I mean, if you can do an apple, what's the big? They're not so easy." They're really not so easy. Try and make an apple shiny with a dry substance like yeah. pastel, you know? Try to make something look wet with something yeah. that's dry. Yeah. Okay. We've seen your yeah. apples, we know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's an awful lot of instruction <laughs> from Walter, let me tell you. peppers, too. My peppers, yeah. Bring them out. Yeah. Those peppers have a very funny story. Um, that was my first... No, bring them up so they can see them. This was my... One of my first, my first attempts with sandpaper. And this was about when I was stopping taking lessons. No, well, I'm still taking lessons with Walter at this point. But I was, um, this I did strictly at home. And I, I had bought myself some sandpaper because he had said to me, try some sandpaper. And so I said, all right, what's sandpaper? And he says, oh, you, I think you're going to like it. Give it a try. He says, I don't use it, but he says, you might really like it. So I ordered some from the art supply store. It's an artist grade sandpaper. It's fantastic stuff. I decided I had this bright idea. I was going to try pastel pencils. Again, with stinking pencils, right? I'm just like drawn to these stupid pencils of any manner, way, or form. Um, I started with the yellow pepper in a pastel pencil. After I got the yellow pepper done, I threw the pencils against the wall because it took forever. I was like, this is crazy. I went back to the sticks and I finished the rest of the peppers with the sticks. It's the same product, just encased in a, a stick yes. instead of, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I get to the background. And I'm like having a whole blast with this thing, okay? It's a color party, okay? I decided I'm going to put purple in the background. And I start going nuts with these crazy colors, and I throw purple in the background. My husband comes into my studio, and he looks, and he goes, you ruined it. And he turned around, and he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> we married 30 years, so I guess we're doing something right, you know? <laughs> He'll, he's honest. Don't you hate when they do that? I hate when they do that. <laughs> well, it gets better. I bring it over to Walter. I show Walter, and he looks, and he goes, you ruined it with that background. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, I really like it. He goes, okay, <laughs> but I don't. I don't think I like it. I said, all right, well, free. Stick it in the frame anyway. I really like it. You know what it is? It was very loud and it was very garish. And it was sort of out of the box. And who would, th who would think to put purple? But you know, who would? everybody loves it. Walter loves it. My husband loves it. They all love it now. They all love it. My husband will not let me sell this painting. This painting has gotten me published in part International Artists Magazine. They used to have a pastel magazine. Yes. And I got published in that as, wow. a, as a finalist Good. in one of their competitions. This has gotten into the Pastel Society show in the city. I've won um, a bunch of awards with it. I've got You're ahead of your time. What's that? You were ahead of your time. I don't know. It was just into the purple, really. Like into the it. purple. It's perfect. It's nice. Yeah. So, now usually in, in water, in, in, there's a background color, right? That, that usually when you paint, when you do, when you when you do pastel on, there's usually a gray or. This whatever. was white. The picture. This was white. Wow. This so there's a lot was, of pastel on that. You know, it grabs the pastel <laughs> very, very easily. This is more than one color that in the background. Oh, yeah. when you see my collection of pastels in my book, there you'll see I'm a little bit. Yeah, that's where we see the books. Yeah. Purple is not just one. So shade. Now no, it's, it's like could be like yeah. six or eight or ten. The dogs that I was passing around, I was up to like sixty pencils in that one. Wow. You know, I, I just different colors. Yeah. I just like using color. Yeah, I you fall in love with the sandpaper. Yes. 
Oh, so is that on sandpaper? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. That's the paper that grabs the. It, it's, grabs it literally right? feels like the sandpaper you would buy from the um, hardware store, only it's made specifically for pastel, so it's archival, it's, um, it's acid free, and all of that. They call it Titus something? Is it, is no, it Wallace. For, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Kitty Wallace makes it. UART makes huh? a brand that I like as well. There's a bunch of the pastel board. There's a whole bunch of different brands that I like that I use. I even make my own. I will take a hot press watercolor paper. Really? And I will uh, use a color fix ground on it that hasn't written it, and I will coat the watercolor paper with that. I have a paint that the tulips are going to have. Yeah, make my own paper. So. Why not, why, not what I, use, why not use cold press? <coughs> cold press that, it, I don't, I, it does. I have a painting at home that I did on that, but I don't like the texture as much. I like the flat um, hot press, and then I can, when I roll the grit on, I'm getting the texture of the grit, not the paper. Nice. But sometimes it works with the paper. Like I said, I have a landscape at home. I didn't bring it tonight, but I do like it. A lot is framed. So, you know, you can get good results with it. It's just really a... A lot of people do it straight on watercolor paper with just yeah. watercolor underpainting right. and pastel on, pastel top, on top. And they don't put any kind of ground at all on it. So there's all different methods. And in the middle of all the madness, before I really got involved in the pastel, I was sort of working with the pastel, but not wanting to give up my pencils. I was working with colored pencil. Colored pencil is torturous. It's, it's torturous. I brought, it's very difficult. Well, it's not difficult so much as it is time consuming. The blossoms over there are colored pencil, the one on the left. And I won't sell it simply for the, for the one reason that I'll never do it again. So, <laughs> I'm, never, I'm not going to sell it because I just won't. You know, You're really attached to the pencils, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I do like them, but I, I'm really attached to my sticks. Yeah. yeah, I really like the pastel sticks. What oh, type Christy. of uh, pastels do you use? Everything. You are Great American, Unison, Schmanke, Sennelier, um, Mount Visions, um, Art Spectrum, Pan pastels, Wonderful. Rembrandt, new pastels, I mean, Fantastic. all of them, I mean, all of them. Ludwig's, oh, Ludwig's are my new favorite. Yeah. There are these little square softies with these most intense colors, oh my god, they are just absolutely... Now, Chris, can you use different types of pastels with, can you mix them, or... You layer them, or you, you put them, them next to each other. Yeah. yeah, layering is a good thing. If they work dark to light, just like oils, it's easy to put a light color over a dark color, it's harder to put a... Uh, dark color over a light color. No, I wasn't meant, I mean, I mean different types of, of companies. Oh, know? yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, they, they all mix them. No, yeah, yeah they all mix all together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I do, do it all the time. Um, I don't even know what I used on that one with the still life there, that with the lemon and the lime. It has a whole mixture. The background is Ludwig, so that much I remember. You can see how intense those colors are. Um, mm. Oh, this guy? Yeah, switch those two. The sketch. Oh, my mm -hmm. Yeah, put that on top. Yeah. The sketch is nice too. Yeah. 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 That sketch I did a long, long time ago. Can you see it now? Yeah, that's good. Chris, can you put a, a fix it on no. when you finish? No. As a matter of fact, the dogs. Uh, one second, Paul, yeah, I'm okay. getting to you. I won't forget you. Um, the dogs that I sold, I told them. Um, the, old, the people that bought it, I said, if you spray it with fixative, or if someone tells you to spray it, and you spray it with fixative, don't call me. Yeah. I will not fix it, I will not repair it, I will not talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Don't bore me. Yeah, that's cool. I tell them that flat out because it, it ruins changes, the paintings. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it darkens them and destroys them. I'm sorry, Paul. Yeah. I want to ask you, uh, those two flowers are similar. The uh... Yes, one's a watercolor. Okay, which one's the watercolor? The one on the right, the little tiny one. That, for the watercolor, that has a lot more brightness to it than that. Yes, it does. Because that's, that's, that's a pencil, that's all right. Yeah, that's a pencil. Yes. yeah but I can see the difference in the color. That's a great watercolor, by the way. Thank you. If Thank somebody you. doesn't know how to do watercolor, you do a good job. No, she just doesn't know. I know like, how to do them, yeah. I just, I just don't want to do it. She doesn't want to do it. I don't want to do it at the beginning, but that's a great watercolor. They yeah. fight me. That's a I want to work. control my meeting. <laughs> yeah, I do, right? You do pastels. Yeah. You know. But I'll tell you, Chris, and this is a compliment, they look like watercolor. Your pastels yeah. look like watercolor. Well, do you know what, though? They pastels do. are the same paint pigment that they use to manufacture oils and watercolors. Same pigment. Right. Same pigment. They just use a different binder in it so that it makes it into a stick form. Yeah. All beads use the same colors. What's that? All mediums yeah. use the same colors. It's the same they put product. put together by a, a different thing. 
Like right. water, Bonding water color is different. Right. The, the emulsion in the right. acrylic, totally the oil in oil, yeah. the same colors. Same exact colors, the same exact product. Sure. It's just put together differently so that you apply it differently. The reason you get such bright colors with pastels is because it's pure pigment, really. Pure, pure pigment. It's pure pigment. You can get some, I mean, when you see the colors that I have in my, my sets, it's insane. It's like, you look at them and you think, you know, you're going to, that the sticks are only this big. I mean, they're not going to last that long. I never have to replace them. It's like, you yeah. only need a little bit. It's amazing yeah. how far they go. Do you yeah. Yeah. half sticks instead of the... Depends. Sometimes I have, I have Rembrandts that are half sticks. And do you... You work so much with pastel. Do you wear a mask or anything like that? I don't, but I don't blow on them either. It's a really bad idea to blow on them. The dust is very heavy, and it just sort of falls down into the tray. Like, I have a, a large easel in my studio. I tilt it forward, and I put, like, a tray of either a tin foil or a cardboard or something to catch it, and it falls. Oh, you know, if the painting's tilted this way, it'll fall this way. It won't, it won't ruin the painting. And if you don't blow on it, it's not going to fly around. You shouldn't blow on your words. No. You so you're Christine, is there a certain amount of time do uh, pastels dry like water? No, water? no, no. no. I can go stay, back into any one of these pastels. They just stay and dusty, and, like, you know. They stay just the way they are. I can go back into any one of these pastels and change anything I want. So, like, there's no drying. You know, from that, let's say you go to that painting 25 years from now, that can be wiped out? Mm -hmm. I could take any one of these paintings on sandpaper and run them under the faucet. Oh, uh, same thing as watercolor. And you could reuse paper. I had a friend of mine who used to do pastels. No. I had a friend of mine who used to do pastels and he put his painting down and he started petting his dog. And his dog was uh, not a yellow lab, a golden lab, but his tail. Turned the whole painting down. Oh, yeah, wiped the whole painting out. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You realize it's just happening. Does the dog still have a tail? You know, if you were to wipe these out, you would lose the intensity, but you would still have the ghost of the original painting. And they're cool paintings because they're made with cool paint pigment. They're not called cool drawings. Right. The only time they're called a drawing is when you've got like a sketch that um, really is mostly the paper showing through, and you know, if you've got lines or whatever, it really looks like a sketch, then it's a sketch. But when, you, when you're covering the whole thing, it's painting. You know, even like the, the tulip one was a fun one to do because that one I made the paper with the, with the hot press watercolor paper and the, um, and the primer. And then uh, there's a new product out called Pan Pastels. And what it is is these pan pastels that come in these round dishes. They're about that round. I have a picture of them a little bit. You can see it in my thing. And they're about that thick. And you get like a bunch of different colors. I have quite a few of them. And you get these sponge applicators and you, you apply it to the paper just like you would a regular pastel. But the, the applicator is sort of like a brush. It's very cool. I don't like to do a full painting with them. I find them kind of annoying for that. But they are great for like underpaintings and backgrounds. Like especially, you know, with, all, with that one, I, I sprayed it with alcohol, but you get like a CBS, yeah. put it in a spray bottle, and I put the pan on the paper so that, you know, colors, so I got all these neat colors, I laid it flat, and then I sprayed it, and it just turned it into this, like, happy little thing. Yeah. It was very cool. Before you did the, the And then I put the, yeah, then I did my sketch on top of that, okay. and then I did my, oh, my did painting on top of that. Wow. Where did you sketch? Very I just, well, I sketched on top of the background then. I had it sort of laid in, and then I put my sketch on top of it. It didn't go anywhere because the alcohol sort of sets it. And some of it you could still see through if you look at it. Some of it's covered up with the strokes of pastel. It's yeah. a fun thing. It it's just good. another way to have fun, you know, in my spare time. You also did one with a watercolor background. Didn't you? Yes, one I'm trying these? to think which one was a was watercolor. Was that one on the tram there? Was one of them you showed? No, not here. This is the painting of watercolor, or yeah, the painting. I remember. Yeah, you, I, I remember you showed us the here. first one you yeah. did when you did a landscaping. Yeah. It was one of the first ones you brought it in, and it was the most beautiful thing I've seen. It in might be in small. the book. I've got it. Very small, but yeah. it was. It was yeah. the. You, 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 you said you worked on it. All the, you, you, you had to work on it because it, it didn't look right to you. you oh, know. you know which one? I think it was that one. Yeah. I that. think it was that one. Yes. M most of these, these are all on sandpaper with the exception. It's yeah. so funny because this is my favorite landscape and it's on Canson paper. Isn't oh, really? Funny? Yeah. Hmm. 
That volume I've over there is beautiful. Thank you. I see that. That's my yeah, favorite landscape. Yeah, I love that. You like that? I like yeah, that. Yeah, that reminds me of Switzerland. It really like that. You know, yeah. 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 Make sure yeah. you older one. That's Tennessee, actually. It's, is it? yeah. it's a photo from it's Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. I had permission to use Smoky it. Smoky Mountains. Yeah. 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 The Blue Ridge Mountains or something in the background there. Excuse yeah. me, Christine. Yes. Yeah. How do you get a sharp edge with your pastel, like on that one? With the edge of the pastel. Pushy. If you look at my pastels, you see some of them are square, especially the softies. If you go and last on top, they'll stick better because you, you, work hard to, you work hard to soft, so the last layers would be more soft. And if I use a square or edge, or if I find an edge like on a new soft... Pastel? No, no, those are very hard. Yeah. I use softer pastels like Ludwig's. I don't, I never use, I don't use new pastels much anymore. I hardly ever use them. I can't get a sharp edge. Really? I find it very Even easy. for drawing, you know, <laughs> so 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 I use it at the workshop for, for uh, portraits. I have it thrown into my bins, but uh, I, I don't look for them in my landscapes, really. I've got such a selection of soft ones that, and the colors are so vibrant that I just don't. I can see them. Yeah, I've, I've tended to it. I bought, found this new brand called Mount Visions. They're very large. They're about this big, and they're about that thick. And they're really, really, for, for, for the money, I mean, you get a lot of pastel, and the colors are just, like, fantastic. They're all handmade, really nice pastel. I'm really pleased with them a lot. As a matter of fact, that's what the uh, barn was done with, mostly. Oh, mostly Mount Visions. Where do you buy your supplies? For Online. Yeah. Usually uh, Art Joe's. Supply Warehouse, I like. And Jerry's is pretty good, too. And uh, for pastels, another good place is Dakota Art Supply. They're fantastic. I bought quite a bit from them as well. They're in, um, I want to see either Oregon or Seattle, somewhere over there. Isn't Jerry a Rama in, in Long Island someplace? You know, I think they have a couple of um, locations. They're down south in the Carolinas. And I think that Jerry's and Art Supply Warehouse are actually affiliated. Oh. If anybody yeah. orders from them, I think they're affiliated with each other. Jerry's out of Rama. Yeah. yeah. Chris, you... what year did you take that? Calligraphy class. Yeah, oh my gosh, let's see now. I'm really going to get to this about this. My daughter was born in 1997. Somewhere, early 90s. It had to have been. Yes, yeah. We have two calligraphers in the, in the office now. Peggy Woods is one of them. Of course, I'm the other one. Huh? Peggy does it much more. We're doing yeah, it for that quite close. I just know how to do it, but I don't do it. <laughs> That's your story. That's right. I don't do it. I just do it. Um, I've done it for people occasionally, and I know how to do it, but I, I don't. Uh, it's not, I'd, I'd much rather be painting at this point. That's my, my love. Yeah, I, your stuff is beautiful, I know. It's great. Do you order your mats also on... My ma no, Walter does all my framing, except for the little guys. I don't bother him with those if, if they're just like a standard 8x10 or 5x7 or something. But these are Some of these are cutoffs. This was, I was really frustrated. I did a painting, I made the paper for this one as well, and I was so confident I was going to get this right. You know, I'm there, I'm going with the color, and it stunk when I was done with it. I looked at it and I was like, it wasn't what I wanted. And I had a mat in my room um, laying around, so I picked it up, I threw it on the thing, and I said, that part's not took a pair of scissors, I cut it up. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I crop things, you know, yeah. I'll take sections of things. Well, well, did you ever, do you ever like have a, have a, 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 like a frame with a mat and you do the painting? Uh, you know, I've done it and I, I, yeah. it makes me nuts. I, I'm not good at that. And it's a very bad thing because I should be better at that. It would save me a lot of money. <laughs> I do that a lot. Do you? Yeah. I, have such, I wish I, I'm trying to, to paint more to like a standard size, like the dogs I just finished. Those were um, 11 by 14. And the girls, those are actually life size. I can't believe they wanted them that small. But I painted them that size. They were 8 by 10s. I mean, I had it. You decide first the size and then. They wanted it. Those were commissions. They wanted 8 by 10s. And I, I decided to do the dogs 11 by 14 so that if you wanted to save some money on framing, I wasn't going to box them into a custom frame. Yes. So that worked out okay. Um, as far as landscapes go, I, I seem to have a problem with it. I would love to see it paint bigger. I, I will eventually. But you know what the problem is? Pastels get heavy yes. when they get bigger. 
the glass and everything, you know. Yeah. And you can't you, you can't use plexi on it. Well, they won't you can, them. but then it's down with a little scratch and holes and everything. Yeah, it doesn't last. Yeah. 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 It's a yeah. problem. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind painting smaller. I kind of like it. Yes, Mike. Is that a, a pencil or charcoal drawing? This one here. Yeah. That one I did. Um, has to be. 15 years ago. That was a Christmas card. That was a Christmas card, yes. And what it is, is it's a pen and ink, graphite pencil, and Derwent, I don't know if they still make them, but they made these pencils that were water soluble. If you, you shaded with them and then you took a little water in it, you would you'd get the different shadings. And each pencil was a different um, value. And that's what I did that. Everyone's beautiful. Thank you. That's a watercolor, and that one I had done on my patio, and that was one of my absolute total frustration moments with watercolor. I'm, I remember it because I well, what happened? Yeah, I like it too. Thank you. But what I that's what happened. I was painting it, and I wasn't getting where I wanted with it, and it wasn't working for me. And I grabbed. You see how heavy I used the color? I got really nuts. And I just started slopping color on all over the place. I was just so angry that I wasn't getting what I wanted. I walked away and when it dried, I was like, oh, that's not bad. So I stuck it in a frame. And I actually almost sold that quite a few years ago. I had an opportunity to sell that and I wouldn't sell it. I'm kind of glad I didn't. See, the, one, the ones you're really annoyed with, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when I get really annoyed, it's, it's a good, good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenny, I know you're, that. You're always looking and says, oh. I must be frustrated. I should paint like that, you know. I go. try different things, yeah. you know. It yeah. forces me to think out of the box, yes. and I get yeah. so aggravated. That is magnificent. And I try different mm -hmm. things, you know. Um, I even got frustrated with the tulips. I remember the first time I attempted that. I was at Walter's when I started playing around with it. And he looked at me and goes, "Oh my God!" I said, "Yeah, it's pretty bad." And so then he goes, "It wasn't working." I went home and I wiped it out and did it again. And I, got, I did a different approach, and it worked. Not I admire that you did it again. I it. So, well, sometimes I do that too. I had a bonfire once. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my driveway. Wow. <laughs> 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 so bad. <laughs> you sent the smoke out to the yeah. gods of the arts. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know. I usually turn it open and in the back. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little. The little side is getting on there. Yeah. You know, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that you you captured so much contrast for a small painting. A lot of times for small paintings, you know, I lose them. I have to go like right up to them to really be able to see or appreciate what they're about. And I can sit from here and just totally enjoy this Thank because you. it's so definitive and the color is so rich. Thank you. But you know, to stand out so much for a small yeah. painting is really a Thank you. I appreciate Where is this, Chris? Because that looks like Tuscany, the, this thing. The small painting? The small one, that yeah. was actually a learning experience for me. I, I won't enter that in a show or sell it because what I did was I have a few of them in my album that I copied from other artists to try and learn landscapes. And that was a learning experience for me. I keep that in my living room. It's really beautiful. You know the effect you get on that painting? I can see the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, it's so yes. cool. Yes. You know who did the original? Elizabeth Mowry, who happens to be one of my all-time favorite pastel artists. And th that is why I won't sell it, because it's, you know, it's not an original, and I certainly wouldn't enter it in a show. It's not appropriate. But for me, it's, it was a good experience and a good learning tool. I learned a lot painting that. That was a stepping stone for me, actually. She taught me to put crazy colors in just by painting that stupid little thing. I did it from her book. You know, I think that's a nice painting, but I don't think most people would even know that that's yeah. you copy it from someone. No, else. they wouldn't. But I know, know it. You know, yeah, know. yeah, I wouldn't say to put it in the show. No. most people would know it. I could sell it, but I yeah. like it, so yeah. I don't think I will. Uh, well, is, it, is it duplicate to the painting? Oh, it's almost yeah. Well, you can always put après. Right. Uh, but, yeah. In the name of the artist. Then I could then sell yours. it. No, and then yours. And then like you can sell it any price you want. Right, right. But I, I, but you must place. A I know. This yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why I mention it because yes. I, I, I'm not deceitful that way. But if you do, if yeah. you like it, keep it. I, my work stands on its own. I, I, I'm proud of my work, sure. so I don't need. You should to, be. Yeah. I don't need to steal, so to speak, from someone yeah, else. And if I'm learning from them, I'll give them the credit because yeah. they deserve it.
Yeah, Chris, some of your paintings you don't have matted. How do you determine that? Oh, why you do that? That's interesting. Yeah, you know, it, it depends on the composition, I guess. Um, this one here, I purposely wanted it this way, and I don't know why, but when I finished it, I just looked at it and thought it really would look good without a mat. You it's just an aesthetic it. thing. You go, it, without the matting, you go right into it. Yeah. Right into mm. And even with that still life, same thing. I immediately knew I didn't want a mat on it. There was a certain look I wanted yeah. with it. It, it was just an aesthetic yeah. thing. But the frame, the frame alone brings it uh, mm. out. Helps. But then others, you know, I like the... I mean, I have others at home, I think, that, um, that don't have mats. Mm. I think the smaller ones do well because, you know, you, they're not too bad. They don't have to worry about bowing or anything like that. When they get really big, they, you have to make sure they're on a rigid surface, like on a, on a piece of foam core or mm. something. Right. Then you don't have to use a mat. Because a lot of times it takes it away. It takes away from the paint. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. You know, you know um, watercolors I like with mats usually. You have to do something special though when you mat it. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. they have special spacers oh. that you put. There's so a spacer in here. Poor Walter, I drive him crazy with my request. Yes, so he won't touch. Yeah, he, he went out. And <laughs> I, I found the, these spacers that um, I wanted to try, and uh, he went and he bought them for me, and we, we started using them. They work out well. So. When I have, you know what I find, if you, you're going to do this, it looks really good with a frame that's got a very wide profile. If you do this with a frame that's a very narrow profile, I think it tends to look a little cheap. Yeah. You know, this almost serves as the mat as well. Yes. Yes. Same yes. Thing with the other one. Mm. Right. Yeah. The, the filet there around it. it that's a yes. crazy frame, and for some reason it works yeah, on that painting, and it's totally out of the box for me. I would normally not pick a frame like Which that. The yeah, black yeah. with the, the yeah, but you have that you have that light thing. It almost yeah, serves like a mat there yeah. too. Yeah. So I don't know what it is. It looks it's like a museum velvet frame. It looks it's crazy, isn't it? And you see some That's old right. old paintings, yes. and they're this yes. elaborate and velvety looking yes. drapery and stuff all around. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, so it's, it's totally out of the box for me. Yeah. I normally yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. Have that. But, Chris, uh, yeah. even on a mat, do you have to put a spacer behind yeah. the mat? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, either a piece, I like a piece of foam core, <coughs> usually. Um, it gives it a nice space and so it looks nice. it falls away from the Right, glass. like if you look at the one I did of Allison, it's a piece of foam core behind the double mat. Yeah. So the mat is okay. not touching the, the pen. Okay. How do you attach it, though? You well, if the mat is cut just shy, shorter in width than the two outside mats, and it just lays in, it fits. It's just right. sort of stacked. Yeah, it's stacked. It's the back is really, right? No, it's, it fits perfectly. So. Yeah, it's now the, the phone core is, is cut like a mask? Yeah. Oh. I thought it was little pieces. No, no, no. Just, no you just take it and cut it like a mask. Oh. It's a mask. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's just, you know, like a layer. inside. It's like so a layer then that's between the mask the picture. Yeah, the foam cord's acid free, so. And not only that, if it shakes, oh. the pastel falls down. It falls, be, you know, it doesn't fall on the outside mat, so it doesn't dirty up the outside mat. Dirty the it's mat. okay if it falls in between there. Yeah, it fits the, the picture anyway, so it's not going to yeah. fall. It's not gonna oh, fall I guess it would fall in between. Yeah, which is the whole point of it. Because you got a space in between. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to the window and the outside between mat. The, between the mat and the glass. <laughs> yes. Right. Here's the mat, here's the painting, in between is the foam core. So it falls in there, okay. and it can lay in there if there's any dust okay. that, that falls yes. off. Did, did you make that yourself? Off. You cut that out yourself? <laughs> Where is Walter? Walter. There he is. He's my buddy. Should I ask him? Huh? The phone thing. He cuts it. Oh, you cut those things? I know. Out? The man from Laramie. <laughs> What's that? He's quiet. Yeah. Like high noon, he's quiet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like Get out of the town before the sun goes down. I lay them flat on their back as opposed to other people. Like they have to go forward down. with mm -hmm. one of those. Never. 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 Yeah, no, you do it. That's why smaller is better too. And you know, that one has glass on it. Is it a, a non-glass? No, oh, but it's, it's just glass. Are you saying it's not glass? The still life? Yeah. It's regular glass. It's not shiny. It's, yeah. not it's not shiny. It's great, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They yeah. sell a museum yeah. glass, but I can't yeah. afford yeah. it. It's very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. Here's a picture yeah. too. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not like glass. glass. No, they sell something that's called a museum yeah. glass now. Oh, museum glass? It doesn't. It's like extremely expensive. I mean, absolutely cost for them. Anything Oh, I mean, I think a painting like um, maybe the size of Allison, it might cost like $80 just for the glass. Oh, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah.
Yeah. What kind of things like really inspire you to sit down and paint every day or whenever you paint? Like what? You know, do you get up in the morning and say, I'm going to paint and just start? No, I do usually... Do you like wait for some kind of inspiration? Do you keep a notebook? Do you no, I don't keep a notebook. That's a good idea. Because what happens is ideas come to me and then I forget about them. But usually I, I have like ideas in my head of what I'd like to try and do, whether it's a still life or a, a landscape. But it's usually the thing that draws me to try and paint something is generally the color of it. Mm -hmm. There's a color issue that, that draws me. Um, if it's a landscape, there's something about the color, like like the um, the barn. It's beautiful. It was all the colors. It was just the colors in that whole photograph. It was just so beautiful, the colors that I worked from. And that's what drew me. And, and the barn, and, and I actually made up the roof of that barn because what it looked like in real life wasn't as interesting. Mm -hmm. And it was actually busier, and it just <coughs> too much didn't work. So I just sort of made it up, and that that worked pretty well. Um, Do you work on different things at different? At, I'll at have more than yeah, one thing going I mean. at the same time. Sure. Right yeah. now, I'm sort of taking a chill because I just did the two commissions for Christmas, the, the little girls, and then I just finished the dogs, and I'm like mentally exhausted. Um, I usually clean my studio in between paintings, and I did three of them without cleaning. And it wasn't. <laughs> you know, you're a pastelist, you know. <laughs> do, you, do you keep a record of when you finish a painting, the date? You no, and you know, I spent the you better should. part of the last two weeks, I was inspired by Christine. Um, you do, I, I, do you do that? No. I, 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 she did a portfolio, <laughs> and she did a beautiful portfolio, the last, the last um, thing we had. And I said, oh God, i got to do a portfolio, this is crazy. I had one started, but it really wasn't complete, it didn't have everything, and it wasn't really put together right. So for the past two weeks, I have been cutting, slicing, dicing, taking photographs, measuring. I don't remember when a lot of these paintings, you know, were finished. I have, at this point, to go back. There's sizes that should be kept. I have that. Sizes, I have. time. Time I don't have, but I actually do have the time. I just didn't put it down in the book. I do have the time. You have a record of that. I, well, you see my books, you'll see what yeah, I did. I like to very much. Um, they're not complete. Well, they're complete in that they have all my work in them. But I still have to like touch up a few things. But I got out of time. I was literally at 5.30 this tonight, slicing and dicing and <laughs> throwing them in the book. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. But that's what I do. And I, I really haven't done much in the way of watercolors or even pencils recently. Um, you know, graphite pencils. I've just been so very involved with the with the pastels. They've just completely But it's what you love to me. do. I really do I really do love them there. there. Do you paint every day? Not every day, but a few times a week at least. Yeah. Quite a few hours. But so I'm always doing something art related every day. That's important, I think. Yeah. I'm reading, I'm online looking things up. I'm very active on the wet canvas um, Website. I don't know if anybody talks on that. that. Yeah. I've recently become a guide on there, and what that is is um, it was interesting. Um, a lot of people get on here from all over the world. I'm talking Argentina, Ireland, England, Germany, France, the United States. I'm literally all over the place, and I was active on there. I started becoming active on there about a year ago, year and a half ago, and. About two months ago, I was approached by one of the moderators on, on the Pastel channel. They're called channels. It's just like these different sections yeah. on the website. And she asked me if I would be interested in becoming a guide. And I was very flattered, really. I thought it was an awfully nice thing coming from such a huge place, sort of. It's like this nowhere place, but yet it's, it's a gathering place, and it's huge. Um, I think the reason they asked me was because I was active and I offer critiques when people ask for it. I do. Um, I'm not shy about that. I will be honest, you know, but helpful. And I always find something nice about everybody's painting because there always is something nice about everybody's yes. painting. I truly believe that. It's a work of art. It's from your soul. And, you know, all art has, has merit, you know. And it was an awfully nice... Um, compliment really. Did you accept it? I did, I did. Okay. And you know, all it really means is I'll, I'll, now I'm a guide. I'll, um, 
I'm more recognized, I guess. Your name is out there. Uh, they know who I am, yeah. Um, and I will help people when they need it, you know, yes. give them guidance on where to go for mm -hmm. things, and just sort of like, you know, I'm not the only, there's a few of them that are guides on, on the channel. As a matter of fact, the last, last few paintings I've submitted for, I don't know, critique or whatever to share, because I'll put my paintings up there. The last one was Emma and Bubba, and um, it was very rewarding because uh, I got quite a response. Over 3,000 people looked at the painting, which was awfully high. And I, for responses, I was off the charts because people actually would sit and take the time to type in a response and that tell me what they thought. Water, water, water. Yes. Wet canvas. Wet canvas. Wet, something wet with wet paints, but wet canvas. Yeah. Wet, yeah, wet paints. Wet right. Easy to remember. Right. 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 Right
I don't use them, but they have uh, a, yeah, they have a whole channel on oil pastels. They have have you tried to work with them? I haven't. They're totally different. Yeah, I think you have to use solvents with them and brushes yeah. and it's a whole... I think you use sandpaper with it often also. You can, yeah. 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 It's beautiful. I've seen some gorgeous Did you not like working with them? No, I, I, I love it. I'm a purist, let's say. I love the pastel pure. Oh, the color comes out so well. I've seen some oil <coughs> pastels that are just ridiculously good. Yeah, I saw one guy up at uh, Bald Hill a few years ago that was just really, really good, magnificent. But you can I get haven't some, seen very many people. Not too many people use it, and I think I think it's a totally different approach. It's almost like feeding the oil, really, right? Yeah. Because well, you use the solvent and the brushes. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, they're hard. I had a good friend who was an oil painter, and whenever she had an idea for painting, she would make a little oil pastel of this size, and she had dozens of them. Some of them turned into big paintings, and some of them did. And I've got a few of them, and they're just gorgeous. They are, really, and, it, and the colors you can get with them are just as gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, gorgeous. I just haven't tried them. I, I, I thought about it a few times, but then I said, <laughs> you know, you have so much invested in, you know, the supplies you have, it becomes crazy. I mean, I've got tons of watercolor. I use that like all night. I use it for underpainting. I love it for it, that's what I use. Um, Tons of work. I really love all love your work. Paint. And you have almost like two different styles. Like these are very, very soft. Uh -huh. And yet you have <coughs> very, very rich, uh, strong ones. Can you describe, you know, what goes into the changes that you I think it's a mood or just a look I'm, I'm looking for. I, I want the paintings to look like I did them, but I don't want them to look like carbon copies of themselves. And that is a tricky thing. You don't want to stray too far from your style, I guess, so that it doesn't look like your work. Yes. But I would get bored yeah. if they all look the same, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I mean, that. some people yeah, don't like that, but I uh, what's that? I, do, I work more, mainly in watercolor, and I do kind of do that. But you know what I, I think the difference is? Some things and then some other things I think with pastels, we have such an array of selection with color yeah. that you don't get with any other medium that you can actually completely change your look. This was an experiment down here, this little one. I just went absolutely berserk with the color. I was more into how wild can I go really and still keep it like a landscape. Can and you hold it you This is of the same place. Chris, can you hold that picture of this? Yeah, both the wineries. It's the Publisi Winery on the North Fork. This was looking in one direction. This was looking in the other. Same day, too. Come on, Chris, which one is it? We know. The bleasing. The The bleasing. 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 The go over more layers with that when it's deeper? Cause I, no, I think it's just the color choice. Like still life, you can really get more punchy. If you, if you Even the floral, you can get more punchy with that because um, it's more of a close-up and it can handle those richer, darker values. But I think in a landscape, you do have to cut back on your values a bit and try. I try. Nature's not that dark. No, it's not that dark. I try not to go darker than a value seven in a landscape. This is almost sparingly. It's almost like you were using the pastel almost. This? Yeah, like pulling back a little bit. Oh no, there's a lot of pastel. No, no, I don't mean, I don't mean, I mean the color. Not, this not, one's sparing. Yeah, not the, not the pastel yeah, itself. It's, yeah, it's more, it's like, yeah. A higher key maybe? Yeah. And, and, and a little less contrast, you know, more yeah. contrast. Yeah. Yeah. It was an experiment. Chris, you have the two on the de on the table. Yeah. It would be a transition between these oh, and those. You're right, yeah. What do you mean? I would say this is of one type. That's I, those two they are different that, seasons. And then the different these darker ones. Right. It's almost like you can see a transition. Yeah. These two look the same. Yes. Yeah. 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 These but two look the same very much. Only because they're the same season. These were from the same day. Same no, 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 no. Only because they're the same season. This and that one, they look almost like the same, same these values. These yeah. two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, both of these were experiments, so maybe that's why. Except that it's framed. It's a little dark. That doesn't have a mat on, so it has a different look. No, but you can tell it's the same art. So, Chris, did you do those both on site, or did you take pictures? No, I took tons of pictures. As a matter of fact, this one here, everything's an experiment, right? This one here, um, on top here, there was a, a gal, I don't know if anybody's heard of her, Deborah Secor? 
She's a pastel artist as well. Yeah. Um, she's very good. She had, she's out of New Mexico, I believe. She's on that website, Web Canvas, and she had a challenge. She got on and she said, um, what can you do with, I think she said, 20 strokes on a page? What could you paint? Be very se selective oh, about what you do. What a crazy idea, right? I'm sitting here at sketch night one night here, and the girl, you, you'll remember this, she wouldn't sit still. And you remember I was going crazy? I'm like, oh. And you finally yelled at me, said, why didn't you tell me sooner? And I felt bad. I didn't want to like, you know, make anybody feel bad. I was just like, oh, whatever. Don't worry about it. So I packed up my stuff. I couldn't draw her. She just was too wiggly. And I moved. She was just very wiggly. I just couldn't do it. <clears throat> so I moved to the back of the room where I wasn't even looking at her. I pulled out a photograph. I wiped her out of my paper. I just was using cans on paper. And I remembered that challenge that Deborah had. How many, what can you do with 10 strokes on a, really think about what you're doing, value, color, 10. 10. 20. Not a lot. 20. 20. Not a lot. 20 before. Maybe, yeah. whatever. It, was, <laughs> it, it wasn't a lot. It I heard was, 20. It, it was ridiculous. 10, 20, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It was terrible. So what did you do? Tell us. This. But I didn't do it in 20. What happened was, I, I had this thing, I just drew out the box on a paper, and I looked at the photograph, and I said, well, all right, let's say it's 20. Yes. Um, picked out my colors, and I decided what shapes I was going to block in. It was really just a block in. And I just blocked in the sky, and I counted as I was going. And I, I ended up with 20, and I stopped, and I looked at it, and I was like, it's not done. <laughs> but I liked what I saw. So I took it home and played with it. And that's what I ended up with. Fantastic. That works. So sometimes it works. It was an interesting experiment. Yeah. That's a very good experiment. It forced me yeah. to narrow down my options yeah. and not and really think about what I was doing and not just throw things up haphazardly because I really was bound up by that number twenty. I, once I hit twenty I had to stop, so I gotta make it count. You have to look at it. Right? How to make it count. Yeah. It's kind of a shorthand so that you get yeah. the essence of what you're looking yeah. at or what you yeah, want. Exactly. And when I stopped, I liked what I saw and I said, I could make a painting out of this. And I did. So yeah. that's, what, that's how that one evolved. Fantastic. So, you know, the moral of the story is really don't be so afraid. I mean, sometimes it's hard. I, I can be very afraid to touch pastel the paper or to try something new. You know, it's like, oh, God, I'm going to screw this up, you know. But... <laughs> At the end of the day, you have to tell yourself it's just a piece of paper. I mean, I'm the worst at that. Yeah. You know, I look at it and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I mean, landscapes for me were my nemesis. I just was petrified of landscapes. There was just no way I was going to get landscapes down. Couldn't wrap my brain around them. There's too much information, too many values, all the colors. I wasn't going there. For years, I mean, I wasn't going there. I'm glad you did. Mm -hmm. I am too because I enjoy them. They're so much fun, and I never thought I'd say that. It was an awfully hard learning curve, though. Let me tell you, two years of just painting everything I saw out of the books that I loved. If I loved the artist, I copied the painting. I've got them in there, a few of them, and that one, that little one, was a turning point for me. I have a couple more at home that are like that. You know, um, as a matter of fact, I should have brought I had two little ones, I forgot to bring them. It's just I was overwhelmed with what, what I should bring. Oh, oh. More than enough. It's just a really different way of thinking, really. Yeah. Uh, when you do a landscape, it's approaching. You know, oh, it's yeah. totally yeah. different. And that was what was so hard for me because I was so into portraits and still life. And it was, even though, you know, you can say it's still life, it's sort of like a landscape on a table. It's still different. I mean, you still you don't have the atmosphere. And well, the I was gonna say you don't have this. You have something and that's scale. constant in front of you. That when right. this, you know, when you're if you're painting out in plain air, your light's gonna change oh. in two hours. Oh, so totally. You do have to work in shorthand. You have to get down yes. what you're. Think you're, fast. You know, you have to think fast and edit out while you're yep. working. And that's the heart. That's the one. You know, less is more. They always tell you, but you always want to put that extra in. You know? Yes, you do. It's a it's a leap. It's a leap. It was, very, it was a very hard learning curve for me. It took me quite, I mean, I made a lot of garbage. I mean, I still do. You know, I throw out a lot. You know, never, never always satisfied with what you do. But I really up and make a collage out of it. So you are the man. Away, you're right? <laughs> you're the smoke that we see in the north. That was me. That was me. I set something to flame. It wasn't good. <laughs> I'm so angry. Christine, don't you feel that a landscape, you can move things around more than a still life? 
Because you um, copy the still life. Yeah. Well, one little stroke on a landscape. No, you know what I'm finding with landscapes? The difficulty with landscapes is trying to make sure that you don't repeat your shapes, that you keep in the abstract, that you have interesting lines, and you get the right values. Is there so many different things in play when you're doing a landscape? You need a lot of depth in landscape. It's just a different thing. With, with still life, it's a matter of playing with color, arrangement, reflected light. I mean, you do have some reflected light in, in landscape, sure, but they're just different. And I found them overwhelming. You know, you're trying to put this big acreage onto this square, little square. thing. You know, for me, it was very intimidating. Very, and I still, I still get intimidated, but I enjoy them now. It's, it's an enjoyable challenge now. But it took a while. It took a while. So I'm glad I did it, though. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.